I'm gonna get it right this time. Boss. Boss. Yeah, we on boss talk one on one. Yeah, we gonna talk, we gonna have fun. <laughs> we be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely official Mr. Maker. You don't know what's going on with everything. Hey, man. So today we got a special <laughs> guest, man. Everybody done seen him, man. When it come down to sports, man, you can't miss it, man. Ever since the 90s, man, this guy, he came in the game. Hey, pretty much educated us on what was going on with, with everything that we needed to know when it came to the Cowboys. And uh, this guy has been just treading through when it comes to sports, man. Check it out, man. John Jock Taylor is here. Is it John or Sean? John. John. I, I knew I was going to mess it up. Didn't I tell you that before he came? I said, is it John or Sean? <laughs> I wanted to say Jock Taylor, but I want to make sure I get it right, man. Nah, it's all good, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Man, so just to get in a little bit, I always ask this, man, and, and I'm going to go first, right? Go ahead. So, so give us a little bit about yourself in case somebody – don't know who Jock Taylor is. Well, I mean, it's uh, um, I'm a uh, I'm trying to figure out what I do because I do so much these days. Oh yeah, you can't really wrap it up. Uh, I've been researching you, so I know you've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, re really, right now I am um, I'm writing. I'm doing a little bit of TV work. I'm doing some podcasting. I'm doing some radio, and I'm having fun. That's what's up. So, um, what do you um? Coming up, are you from Dallas originally? Rugged and led better, baby. Oh man, this dude here, man, Steph. Hey, man. Oh, Cliff. He like her from Kingston, man. It's not a game. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not a game. It's, it's not Cliff a game, Price. man. So it's I'm, rugged and led better, Oh, Cliff. Say, man, that's real, man. I, like, like when I first came to Dallas from the country, I was like, man, you gotta go, you gotta tread lightly in Oak Cliff. <laughs> they had that rep over there. So what's going on, Steph? I know you got your list. You see the pamphlet. Oh, oh, wow. you, oh you been, she better go in there. on you. A lot of questions over there. Last night, I, I mean, night four last, I had to stop when she was going in. So I said, wait a minute. We're going to <laughs> no, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Not a Damn. whole lot. But I know you covered the Cowboys, the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 30. Yeah. How was that like? Because was that the last time that they won? Yeah, that was the last time they won the Super Bowl. <laughs> and what year was that again? 1995. That was a long time a ago. Long that time was my ago. Uh, first year covering the Cowboys. And to be honest, I tell people this all the time. I made the uh, I made the jump, much like Kevin Garnett and, and Kobe Bryant, from high school to the NBA. So I was covering mm -hmm. high schools, and they got moved to the Cowboys. Wow. wow. And How does see that the, feel? Well, see the way y'all say wow? Yeah. That's what I'm telling you is I don't really remember very much from that first year because it was so hard. That's it. And it was so overwhelming that I spent much of that year trying to survive. So I don't really remember a whole lot from that year, which is very ironic to me. Um, I can you know, imagine. I can imagine because you come in and you, all you're trying to do is make, make yourself known and doing research and divulging yourself into your work. So you, yeah. you're not really getting a chance to enjoy Oh no! It was, uh, but it was a weird situation. But if I uh, if I look back at my career, much of it has been kind of God moving around, moving pieces for you. Because yeah. what happened was I was covering high schools. This is really funny to me because it's always funny when I tell this story. I was covering high schools, minding my own business, and this one dude whose name I shall not divulge <laughs> got demoted. Okay. Okay, but check this out. He was covering the NHL, the Stanley Cup. Okay. okay. He did something. Nobody, I mean, nobody knows to this day what he did, but he got called back from New York or wherever the Stanley Cup was and got demoted. And so the guy who was covering the Stars started covering the NHL. Right. Okay. The guy who was covering the Cowboys, Tim Kalashaw, who a lot of y'all see on Around the Horn or whatever, yeah, yeah. said, okay, I'm tired of the Cowboys. I'm going to go cover the Stars. Nice. Ed Werder, who was the number two guy on the Cowboys, said, oh, great. That means I get to move up to the number one guy on the Cowboys. Wow. And all of a sudden, the number two slot opened up. <clears throat> now, I was just covering high schools, but I was in the midst. I've had this a few times. It's like, when, it's like Steph Curry right now, where he didn't average 40 points in the month of April. Yeah, I was on one of them streets. Everything I wrote was like, bam, it was fantastic. Right, good. Right. And oh, so, God. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so I remember asking my boss at the time, you think that'd be crazy if I tell them I want to cover the Cowboys wow. or to consider me? She said, nope. I said, don't lie to me now. And she wow. said, nope. So I spent that weekend coming up with a plan for how I would cover the beat and what kind of stories I would write, what, how I would try to create sources and all that. 
turned it in with a bunch of story ideas, and uh, they sat on it for a couple of days. Called me and said, "Okay, we'll put you on there and give you a shot." Wow, and that's so good, that's man. that's how it started. So, and and I like how what, how did you get into writing on a whole? Did we, you know, how did you get into it? Just journalism, and what was the thing uh, that put you into it? No, it's just I always I couldn't tell you because it's what I've always done. Really? Yeah, I'm that dude who figured out it. You know, Early my father life. would say five. I don't, I, you know, I yeah. call BS on that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, maybe yeah. not. I don't know. But uh, I just always knew uh, this is what I was going to do. I would say, really? I would say, I really made a move toward it in like uh, you know seventh grade, eighth grade. I mean, it's just what I do. So I couldn't tell you when I started or why I started. It's just what I do. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I've been pretty much single minded in the focus. Yeah. So you know, all in high school, I did it. And that's writing, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when you got into the sports section of it, is that something you wanted to do? Or? No, I did sports from the jump. From the jump. See what I'm saying? This but, is crazy. No. Right, like, but that's something, it, was that before you did it, was that something that you wanted to, or you just wanted to write? No, I was always good at it. And what happened was... Um, do you love sports? Yeah. You I can't can do it if you don't love it. You gotta love it. You uh, can grow to love it. Because sometimes you can get in, get thrown into a position... And you're like, okay, let me make the best out of this. Let me start doing some research. And then once you're doing the research and you start to gain knowledge about that, then you're like, okay, well, I, I, I like it. No, com- nah. Communication like, nah. would be different nah. for me. I was, I, was, I was trying to say, you, I mean, you could do that. I mean, it's like a relationship. You could learn to love somebody. Arrange marriage. No, I mean, you can, <laughs> you can start off liking somebody and not really be all that interested in yeah. them. And then if you hang around of them over the course of time, you might find some things you like about them. And you could learn to love them. But when it started off, you didn't have no interest is that, in it. Is right. that the way some of the players come off to you? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no. Like, like far as you start off, okay, he all right. But then as you get learn more and more about him, he come he becomes more, okay, favorite. he's doing, yeah, he's doing the all right job. You talking about just, just relationships with players? No, no, not relationship. Just their, their, their skill set, actually. You liking a player because you like, okay, he didn't start off really great. Yeah, he, and he was arrogant with it at the time. Yeah. So attitude did have a little bit to do with it. Oh, you like talking that. about how I deal with players? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Nah, I don't even go like that. You don't even think about them that it's, way? No, I think about them. The reason I'm good at what I do is I think about them like people. Meaning, okay. but it means like this. If you walk into a party and you just walk in and you don't know anybody, there's certain people you're instantly like, okay, they look interesting. They look like they have whatever certain people you're drawn to, so you go talk to them first. That's it. And sometimes you hit it off and you stay there, or sometimes you ah, it wasn't what I thought, so you move on. Same thing as locker room. There are players who you just gravitate toward first, and so you start talking to them. Some players, you instantly, just like at a party, you're like, that dude whack. I yes, why, yeah, you know. So you don't have any interest in talking to them. And sometimes they prove right, or sometimes you go, oh, I was wrong, that dude's cool. And then some people you're ambivalent towards. So locker room is the same way. Players are the same way. Wow. People and, in general, right? Well, yeah, that's, you know, I, what you have to do is you have to treat athletes like people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, they because make a look. They, they are people. They just have more money than you. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But as I've told more than one athlete, I'm as good at my job as you are at yours. Exactly. And I've told some, I'm better at my job than you are at yours. <laughs> that's it. Oh, I know. Because I'm mean, at the top of the food chain and you ain't. Oh, uh, I, I, I definitely, I, I definitely seen some things happen. I, I, I can tell you some things that when the Dez Bryant thing happened back in the day, <laughs> I, I seen that. See, a certain thing because I always thought of you as my people. You might not know that, but no, because I didn't. of her, well, I know it because of because of your wife. Right. When right. I see on TV, I tell my wife, "Don't I?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's Jock Taylor. That, you know, uh, that's family right there." But I really hadn't even met him. <laughs> But I knew the, I knew Lorraine, right, so y'all right. won to me. So at the end of the day, that's that's how I look at it. But it's just a uh, it's just a good thing. But how what happened with you and when did it, with, when that how did that go down for you? And that's a lot. That's a long time ago too. So yeah, I think that was uh, I don't even remember it. Maybe twenty fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, some of it was my fault. <laughs> some of it was Dad's fault. Some of, some of it was nobody's fault. Okay. Um, that's the backstory. Um, okay, let's go back to what happened because for people like me who don't know the story, <laughs> no, I'm finna get to that. That's, okay. that's why I just give you the backstory. Oh, yeah. Some of okay. it's my fault. <laughs> some of it was his fault. Some of it was nobody's fault. Okay. Uh, but uh, you know, I I think it was 2015. Me and Des got into a big argument um, in the locker room. Although the reality is. You know the famous clip where he's going off yeah, and Jason yeah. Witten is stopping his press his press conference to look. He wasn't even mad at me. He was talking to somebody else. Oh, it just got put out there that way. 
Well, it, that's because well, here's what happened. Because you have to have the backstory to understand yeah. what happened in the locker room that day. Uh, Dez was coming off an injury, and I think they played Seattle, and he had two or three catches for very few yards. And uh, I ended up writing a column about he's got to do better. They need more for him if he's supposed to be who he says he yeah. is and who yeah. he's proclaimed to be and who he's paid to be. All right, cool. The issue came, so that that was fine. I mean, yeah. you had a bad game, you had a bad game. Deal exactly. with it, own it. That's your issue, not mine. But the problem comes, something happened the next day, and I couldn't, like, if you write something like that, you have to show up the next day so that if he has something to say, he can say it to you. Because I don't think he showed up after the game. Okay. Oh, okay. So something happened, like, out of my control. Either I had something I couldn't stop, so I didn't show up on Monday. Oh, all right. Now, Tuesday is the player's day off. Okay. All right. I think this is how it went down. So all of that is building up. Right. And then Wednesday, to. I think what happened is he didn't show up Monday. Uh oh I think this is what happened. Okay, he didn't, so show, he up didn't Monday. show up Monday. Tuesday, I didn't see him. Wednesday was the day I had something I couldn't, I had to do. Yeah. All right. So now, Wednesday, because I didn't show up. Uh, he told some people, oh, where that blankety blank at? I'm looking oh, da, 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 da 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 I mean, people do that all the time. It's no yeah. big deal. So Thursday, because my people said, yo, your boy looking for you. <laughs> so all right, fine. I'll be there Thursday. So what happened Thursday is, and it's really funny, because he's sitting at his locker, sitting down, and he's looking right, talking to somebody, talking, 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 talking. And at one point, he started talking about me. And so, but I'm walking straight toward him, but he didn't see me. Yeah. Cause, so he's talking about me, and then I walk up right in his grill. <laughs> oh, man. And then he says, back up. And then, um, you know, we had some words, because I was like, well, you've been looking for me. Well, here I am. Oh, what, man, what this street, old Cliff in the house, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't really all that. I know it I was. I mean, it was, you know, it was man-to-man -man talk, because... Yeah. I am a grown man, exactly. and you can't talk to me any kind of way, exactly. and I've always been like that. Uh, but he got up, and he was walking out. And so I'm walking right next to him. And then, and this is what I say when I mean what I said earlier, then this guy named Devin Street, who's also a receiver, okay, comes out. He, now, have you heard of Devin Street? Uh, exactly. Shut the hell up. <laughs> I mean, exactly. <laughs> like, you ain't heard of Devin no, Street. Right. No. So Devin Street walks up. And he tries to say, yo, quit talking. Like, dude, ain't nobody even talking to you. <laughs> he going to take his back. He trying to right, take up for it. Right. Like, I get it. You are nobody. Yeah, 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 yeah. You are classic. I'm better at my job than you are at your job. Yeah. Classic. So shut up because I'm not talking to you. <laughs> and he kept on going. And then he said, why'd you call me the N-word? I'm like, ah. what are you talking about? <laughs> you just called me the N-word. I go, what are you talking about? <laughs> and so I'm on with Dez. And now... Um, then Dez comes back and he's mad at this guy from Sports Illustrated because he tweeted out our conversation. Wow. So when he's doing all that yelling and screaming, he's screaming at the that guy, guy yeah. not me. But in the meantime, Devin Street has told people that I've said the N-word. Oh, man, it's going down. Right. So now I get on somebody's radio show locally and I'm talking about this incident with me and Dez. And I talk about this guy. And said, he said this. I didn't even say that. I said, yeah. I ain't even talking to you. Yeah, I said, exactly. this is my old Cliff vernacular came out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, after that, man, it blew up because, and then, see, I know how these things work. Yeah, you. Since I got a radio station, I sent my boss in ESPN in Bristol an email. Yo, this is what happened in the locker room. Yeah, yeah. You got to cover your ground. And then classic ESPN, oh, it's cool. Yeah. And then as it becomes a bigger story. Now we got to have Okay, now can you have them send us the video, the, the audio tape for you on the radio? Uh, but fortunately for me, one of the PR staffers said he was walking right behind me when I was having this conversation. He said I was two feet from him. He never said anything like that. And so to make a long story short, it blew over after that. But that was uh, that was kind of like what happened with Dez. Did you, you and Dez ever talk after that? Yeah, man. Okay. I mean, me I and Dez are cool. Yeah, I mean, I figured, if I saw him today, he'd dap me up. Yeah, cause he he in Oak Cliff a lot, you know. <laughs> That's what I mean. Had. I used to see him at the gym all the time. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you know, I wrote all the stories on Dez when he was a rookie and when he was coming out of Oklahoma State, and so we had a really good relationship. It's just you know, if you if you Things cover happen. people long enough, yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, it's just like marriage, man. If you if you stay married long Up enough, you're going to have some conversations that one person leave mad for a little while. Oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Don't I mean, let it ain't never my down. fault when it happened, but it happens sometimes. I'm like you. Right. I know. <laughs> Trying to keep it going. So be, uh, being a journalist, being a journalist, um, is that one of the biggest situation that has ever happened to you? Because you're going to have some things that you've written that people don't like. Yeah. And maybe want to step to you and argue with you about a certain, you know, yeah. whatever uh, you wrote. Would you consider that as being the biggest misunderstanding uh, or something like that? No, I've had a few of them. But typically, they, I haven't had any real... Um, real bad. Not any that last because... See, what you're talking about happens... Like somebody stepped to you and in your face type of like... I don't think so because, see, what happens is that only happens if you've gone about your business a certain way. Okay. If I, if I come to you and, sit and, and write stories about why you're playing poorly, but I've asked you why you're playing poorly, and then I write it out that you're playing poorly, I mean, that ain't my fault that you're playing poorly. <laughs> The problem most journalists have to end up in situations that you're talking about at some point when they were writing, they made it personal. Like wow. they took a cheap shot or they said something right. and they made it personal and they deviated from the facts. And again, see, this is all being a journalist is a number of relationships. That's why I use a lot of relationship analogies. If you having a disagreement with your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, you can have a disagreement. As soon as you make it personal and you leave the facts and make it personal, okay, now you done elevate the whole That's debate. So true. I've never really had those because I can write tough stories, but I've always asked you about it before I wrote it. You yeah. didn't open it up like, oh, my God, I can't believe you wrote that. Mm -hmm. Well, dude, I was just talking to you yesterday about what I was going to write and how I was going to write and all these different questions. And That's good, man. And I so that's why I have avoided a lot of that drama. But you don't only do um, journalism about sports. You do it on other things too, right? Mm -mm. No? Only sports? Mm hmm I don't yeah. like other stuff. You don't like <laughs> No, like, seriously, I don't, like, I, I don't, uh, you could ask my wife. I don't watch local news. I don't want to hear Me about either. politics. I don't want to yeah, hear about babies dying. Don't, I don't want to, I don't want to do any of that. So I don't, I had no interest in it. And uh, when I was in college, um, I had to do it for a minute, but just a minute. And uh, when I was graduating, I was turning down job hours. People were like, hey, come cover, you know, politics or come cover local news for us. Nah, bro, it's not what I do. It's so crazy because somebody uh, mentioned the other day, we were talking about the radio. And we always feel like the radio is getting extinct somewhat with compared to with podcasting everything. or with social media and everything else. YouTube, and they're like, yeah. like for me, when I used to drive to work in the morning, the only time I listen to the radio is on the way to work. Yeah. But now it's a case where for news, because people are like, you're going to look up, you want to hear about the weather, you want to hear about traffic. I put in my directions in my phone, even if I'm going that way every day all the time, and I'll see, okay, is there a wreck or is there a the so I don't ever listen to the news anymore, even right. for traffic, because my mm -hmm. phone tells me everything. So mm -hmm. there's no need to sit down and wait for that news to come on or wait for this. I can find out right there on the tip of my, my fingers. So whereas, because I know you've been in radio so, mm -hmm. also, so how do you feel about the radio industry and where you think it's going? Well, I'm pissed at the radio industry because they, <laughs> they fired me once I had a top 11 show. Wow. Uh, but... Um, you know, in my business, uh, Randy Galloway, who used to have a radio show for about 20 years. Okay. He was one of the first people to show a blue. See, journalism is not a business when I got in it that you got rich. Mm -hmm. You can make a nice living, but mm -hmm. you couldn't get rich. Randy Galloway created a blueprint for how you get rich. And how you get rich is you become a columnist. Mm -hmm. And when you have a columnist, you're an opinion maker. And once you're an opinion maker, then you can get a radio show. Okay. All right. And then what happens? You can take, I mean, in normal situation, okay, you're getting paid a lot because Colin is his top job at the paper. Now I got a radio show. I can bank all that money. That's how and you get rich. That. Right. That's how, that was the plan. That was the blueprint for journalists getting rich. And so when I became a columnist, I was like, where my radio show? Where's that? <laughs> uh, and so I finally got one. Wow. Uh, now, the problem was... You had that goal set. Once he told you that, you had your goal set on... Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, that's that's the blueprint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's something doable. That's something I can do. Uh, but And I did it for eight months. And then I got laid off at ESPN. Mm. 
Wow. And so I was like, because when I got the radio show, I was like, man, I only need to do this for like three or four years. I'm straight. Did you yeah. like it? Yeah. Um, and so once I got laid off from ESPN, then the radio became, I never wanted radio to be a full-time job, but then it became a full, I mean, it became my main job because mm -hmm. radio ain't fair. I mean, radio, mm -hmm. new program director come in, don't like the sound of your voice. You got you fired. I mean, yeah, it's we crazy. just had uh, Vita Loco on here Sunday and she was talking about that. <laughs> so radio, yeah, I never wanted that to be my main girl. And so, um, uh, but it turned out that way and uh, I enjoy radio, but then radio show, I said, they didn't want to be a main girl. We went from 31st, which was last in the market, to it's really funny to me. We were last in the market last March um, because of the pandemic. Okay. People's listening habits changed, so we yeah. went and we were all, we were always on the cusp anyway. So we we dropped all the way to the bottom. Wow! Took it all the way up to number 11, and then literally three weeks later, they said, "Well, we changed to a national format, so all y'all fired." Wow. But I, I, I seen it happen. Like I said, yeah. Vita Loco just went through that same thing. And no. they just don't, they, they don't, you have to have some tough skin, I told her, to work yeah. in radio. Yeah. <laughs> you so, know what I mean? And they do a lot of layoffs for some reason. Yeah, they be tripping. We were talking, to, talking to Jay Cruz. He was telling we about Jay Philadelphia and mm -hmm. how they laid, they just shut that whole radio mm -hmm. station. And like, basically what they did. Just they, like that. They, they don't just give just, you no heads up. No, no nothing. They're just coming no. and closing down. Um, the good thing for us was they told us that in August. And uh, we had like six her. six weeks before the final show. And so me and my radio host, because, again, we had gone from 31st to 11th in five months. So clearly people like the show. Yeah, definitely. And so we that's when we decided to turn the show into a podcast. So we yeah, went and got an I'm LLC reading, and uh, started putting everything in. And we were like, hopefully, you know, in the next few months we can make some money. Yeah. And it turned out that we had several people contact us right away say, hey, we could never advertise on your radio show because the rates were too high. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But for your podcast, tell us what you what you charge. And wow. we're like, oh, snap. That's good. And so we've had advertisers from day one. And uh, now I think uh, we just added two more this month. So we're up to 10. I think we got 10 advertisers. We got, we, we got a title do. sponsor. Mm -hmm. so, we got some work to do. I know. Um, I know. So no, nah, so it's great. So we're actually able to... Uh, to pay ourselves a little bit every month, and that's on your podcast, mm -hmm. yeah. which is uh, which is great. That's and so uh, <laughs> and so it's growing. Matter of fact, we just uh, I was kind of shocked. We just had our best month in terms of downloads in March, and wow. I say I'm shocked because this ain't football season. This is yeah. the off season. Jam session, yeah. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. jam, yeah. I was just looking at jam yeah. session. So how'd you guys come up with that name, Jacques and Matt? That, that makes mm. sense. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Talking <laughs> sports, talk one jamming. on one. You know, we we basically just. We bosses. We put bosses in the front of See? <laughs> <laughs> so what about the first Super Bowl that you covered? Were you nervous? Have you ever been nervous when you covered something? Not really. Not really? No. It's, uh, I mean, why are you nervous? It's what you do. <laughs> you say that. I used to play a little ball and stuff. I got a little butterflies at the first of the game or something, you know, to where I didn't, or if I was going into an unknown situation the first time, yeah, it, 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 it messed with me a little bit. Nah, then after I mean, after you start, then bam, you yeah, some excitement, but I wouldn't Maybe call it. Uh, I wouldn't call it nerves because I'm, you know, to me, it's just me now. Nervousness is a product of you're not really comfortable, you're not fully prepared. Yeah, I get it. You uh, it but I know way. what I'm doing, and I know I've prepared, and I know I'm good at it. And yeah. so the 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 whole key is, and it doesn't matter what you're talking about, writing sports, or whatever. It's not to make it bigger than it is. That's it's it. It's what it is. Um, you know, one of my favorite quotes of all time came from uh, Emmitt Smith. Because you ask athletes all the time, hey, same question you just asked me. Mm -hmm. So you're asking Emmitt, yo, were you were you nervous before the Super Bowl? Yeah. He goes, oh, no, no. So the obvious question is, well, you say it like that, well, why not? Why not? I said, you know, he said, well, you know, people who get nervous look at it as there's a million people, there's 18 Hundred, I mean, eighteen million people or fifty million people out there watching me. Man, what if I mess up? Mm -hmm. He goes, "No, nah, man. Me and Mike looked at us, at each other. That's why it's one of my favorite quotes." He said, "Me and Mike looked at each other and said, 'Yo, it's fifty million people about to watch us do our thing. Let's go.' Hey, I mean, yeah. it's just, just a difference in mindset. And so, no, I get uh, you know you get excited because it's a big game or a big moment or a big event, but um, nervous? No. Yeah. What about? Let me ask you this. So. I mean, my kids, uh, 
they 15. Now, even the older, my older one is an Eagles fan, of course. But anyway, they never seen the Cowboys win anything, okay? See, I was going to get to that point because the <laughs> fact think, that the fact that I'm not from here, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So what I consider football is soccer. Right. Yeah. And yeah. when I Who's came here, team? In, of course, Jamaica because I'm from Jamaica, but anyway. Right, right. But um, when everybody, when I came here, oh, Cowboys is America's team. They sure are. I'm like, they sure are. What I makes the Cowboys? What makes the Cowboys the American team? And then every year, oh yeah, they gonna win. They gonna win. They gonna win. <laughs> that's and my And I'm people. like, and they yeah, come up me. here, and then all of a sudden, they, and I'm like, really? <laughs> I, in the beginning, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I jumped on the bandwagon because I'm like, America's team, yeah, go. But I've been so tired of being let down, and I'm just like, you know what? Forget y'all. We do good a lot of but years. You know, <laughs> the last time you experienced the Super Bowl '95. What do you think that they are missing compared to the team that you saw back then compared to the teams that you have See seen? Now. Oh, not even just now, over the over years. The, oh, it's been, okay. I'm it's sorry, been man. so many years. Well, wait a minute. Don't stress <laughs> it like that. You, I mean, the, uh, you know, the, the reality is every team goes through cycles, all right? Okay. And when you go through your cycle, you have an opportunity to win. The question is, will you win during that cycle. Now, sometimes there's an outlier team that comes from nowhere, wins, and disappears. Mm -hmm. All right? But most of the time, teams that win, they're in the midst of a four- or five-year run where they're really good, and it's, did you win during that period? So, if you look at the Cowboys... Um, did they have that run, like, yeah. for years? Oh, like, yeah. Consecutive? I, yes, we did. No, I mean, consecutive? Yes. They had, I mean, so if you lose, if you, you get upset, if you lose, Paris, if, Sutton, oh, don't do this to us, man. We had a hell of a run. past their last Super Bowl. <laughs> okay. All right. They had a window from about 2007 through, I don't know, maybe 2000, really from 2007 till now. They've had three chances where they were one of the best teams, 2007, 2014, 2016, where they were really so capable of winning champ. But why they didn't close? Because the deal. It's, because it's hard to win. I mean it just is. So they had they had opportunities those years to win and they didn't take advantage of them. So one of them, I mean Dez had a catch that wasn't a catch that should have been a catch. Yeah. And so they lost that game one year. Uh it, dude from Green Bay makes a great catch on the sideline so they end up losing. So I mean But if you say that, okay. What's the name um, of that quarterback that no matter which team he goes on? Okay, we're going to talk about that <laughs> outlier. I mean, there's, I mean, there's an outlier. There's one dude in the history of the National Football League who's done that. So it happens. It happens. I mean, it's like if you play when, if you played when Michael Jordan was playing, you ain't win no championships because Michael, Michael Jordan, Jordan was playing. Boom. So you just a hater. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. What's Jamaican, what's Jamaican, what? what's Jamaican national soccer team won lately? Yeah, yeah, since you so up on I mean, it. we ain't gonna talk about you saying both because we know on, that's that's good. That's what they go to. That's that's what they go to. I just asked about you Jamaican call. soccer Let's team. Let's the topic at hand, yeah. okay? Let's do the topic at hand. Okay, because I'm gonna say they ain't gonna come with this man today. I they ain't, ain't won you nothing. <laughs> so well, nothing. we do have you saying both. They ain't even won the Sugar Chain Championship. We do have you saying both. We ain't talking about track. We talking about soccer because you said soccer was your sport. Yeah, yeah. You didn't say yeah, track was your sport. Track was my sport. No, 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 no. You, you said you. soccer was let, your sport. Let me tell you something about Jamaicans. Being a Jamaican, every sport that Jamaica represents yeah, is Jamaican's and... sport. Every. Okay. I'm telling you. How y'all doing in the sugar chain chopping? Sugar cane chopping. <laughs> <laughs> y'all hey, get a gold hey, medal in that sugar that, cane no, chopper? No, no, I can tell you that right blunt now. Blunt rolling? How y'all doing in that oh, blunt rolling? We might have oh, them in that. No, we, might, we might have no, them in that. that. We might. If there is a blunt rolling competition, Jamaicans will win. So this, is, this is true. This is true. Don't this is true. So, what, what other questions you got for Mr. Jock Taylor? Okay, so being a Cowboys fan. Who said I was a Cowboys oh, fan? Oh, Never are said you a that. Fan? That's a good question. No. I mean, really? Why do you look like that? <laughs> because that's surprising. Why is that surprising? Because you you reported on them. You were there around them all the time. You, I would think. That's that why I'm not a fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He... Okay, hold on. Were you a fan back then, 95? No, I was probably, I was a fan of the Cowboys up until uh, I started covering them. Because once you cover them, you can't be a fan. Plus, what is fandom about? Fandom is about I sit there and I root and I cheer for your team. 
Okay, that's cool. It's my boys. I'm an Ohio State fan because I went to school there. So I root and I cheer for my team. And I have an emotional investment in the Buckeyes. I have no emotional investment in the Cowboys. Wow. Because the first time you get cussed out by a player, you cease to be a fan. (laughs) (laughs) And you got to understand, it's work. It's not, I mean, it's just work. It's like everybody got a job. My job is to tell you why they won, why they lost. And so... Um, you do a good but job. But it's so that was some crazy f- about everybody the way how they just love the Cowboys because he one of the reasons even, though he be breaking it down Texas. and we feel like we we feel like I we travel, in the locker room anywhere I travel <laughs> anywhere I travel and I tell anybody oh yeah, yeah I live in Texas they love Dallas oh go Cowboys I'm like you all the way everywhere. over here and you love New the York Cowboys we went right to New York America's we went to Mississippi Ugh. wherever we went they always loved us they're America's team because you love them or hate them that's it. I don't love them, That's but I good, don't hate now, them. I never I heard it stressed like that way, but it makes sense. <laughs> they bring out the emotions. They bring out people. the emotions in people. Everybody get mad when I when I say something. Yeah, they That's get true. mad, That's but true. it's fine. But they, let them be mad. We riding. We riding together. Me and the Cowboys <laughs> every year off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you think that they'll ever come back? Yeah, everybody. Yeah, they'll come back at some point. Well, yeah, I can tell you when. Now that Dak got that money, it's going down. He has hopes every year. He has he, hopes. He has, he's a fan. He's supposed to. <laughs> it's going down. Right. It, it, so, hey, it, people don't know that he got something to prove this year. Every time the World Cup roll around, y'all think y'all going to win. Oh, yeah. See? Yeah, they do. See yeah, how they, they do? Every time. Yeah. It's, it's, you <laughs> should. See what I'm saying? And we ain't mad at you either. Right. We just getting into it ourselves. We doing our thing. So, Jock, what up? Um, so, 25 Super Bowls you done covered? You done, is that really true? I read up on it a little bit. Then it's true. <laughs> if they wrote it, it's true. Say, man, thank you so much for all the time, man. You looked out for me, man, giving me that that insight that I might in, I might not even watch the game. You know, what I'm <laughs> I said, yeah, I, I believe him. And then I got to go watch the highlights. I'm good. You know what I mean? Right, right. So, so how is it working with? Because you work with different television stations and all that over the years, man. You've done a lot, man. So is that, I mean, you're building relationships the whole time. There's names and people you can call on I can never even understand. You've dealt with Jerry Jones. You know, it's the stuff that I would love to do, to be honest with you, to speak with certain people to elevate what I think, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, um, uh, you know, the thing you have to do is, is what I just said. You have to treat people like people. That's it. You know, I treat Jerry Jones <laughs> like, like a dude. Jerry Jones. Yeah. Not like, yeah, yeah, what's Not up? like some billionaire owner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what happens is you, uh, you just have to be yourself. Yeah. You know, it's not a matter of I have to accommodate him. No, I'm just me. Just being who I am. And uh, being me is either good enough or it's not. Uh, but if you're authentic like that, there's a certain realness to you. Yeah. Um, you know, right now I'm doing a lot of work uh, with ESPN's Undefeated, which is yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I read up on that. a website where uh, they focus on sports and culture. Mm-hmm. And it's really about, uh, which is another way of saying they focus on black folks. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and so I've been going down and doing a lot of work on uh, Jackson State and Deion Sanders because he's coaching there. Yeah, I was about to ask you about him. And, you know, uh, Deion and I were talking a few weeks ago because uh, he, he was talking to a couple of his players. And they were shocked at the reporters in the locker room because this was during the middle of the week. And he said, I've been knowing Jacques 25 years. Yeah. He said, he's around. Cause you he's sound just, like him right now. Stop <laughs> playing, bro. He said, <laughs> he's <laughs> around because he's the same dude Consistent. today mm-hmm. that he was 10 years ago, that he was 20 years ago, yeah. that he was 25 years ago when I met him. That's like he ain't Jesus. changed. So, same the day yesterday and fell. You know, he yeah. said, so. It, it, and you brought up the word and he actually said it. He said, yeah. it's that consistency that I don't have to worry about him, which is why he's around right now. That's what's up. Because right. I don't have to worry about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's you real. know he's gonna do his job and it's cool. And but uh, but the point of that is it's the relationships which are built on authenticity yeah. and built on realness. And again, and I've said this many times, uh, it's the people you had the best relationships with that you can have the toughest questions for. Wow. Because yeah. they know that you don't have an agenda. Exactly. So if I ask you why is your t- like. I was talking to Dion the other day, and after a game, and he basically said the players aren't good enough. Wow, there's a disconnect. We teaching them, they we telling it to them, they're not getting it. Mm. Okay, now you can accept that answer, or you can say, "Well, I got to ask you, dog." The obvious question is, are y'all teaching them well enough? Are y'all breaking it down that's for them to ask. understand? <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's the you question know? that you would but, ask anybody. Yeah, unless. Oh, man, he's going to get mad at me. So Can't worry about it. 
Well, I mean, you say that, but people people are worried about it. Yeah, I know it, but I get I I so, I'm kind of like that on my job, so I get exactly what you're saying. So that's the question you have to ask. Yeah, and then when you ask that question, oh, you get a much better answer, dog. We only had eight defenses in. Oh, we start talking about it really with the details. He said, <laughs> we only had eight defenses in. I went to the sideline and said, what defense y'all want me to call? What can y'all, what can we call where y'all won't have uh, any mental mistakes? They said, call this. We called that. Next play, we gave a 43 yard touchdown. Dude ran down the sideline. He probably still running. Okay. <laughs> that's old boy, so now that's a great quote. That's a great answer. Why I get that answer? Because I wasn't afraid in. to ask the follow up question, right. which was in a nice way. Is it your fault that they ain't learning it? That's exactly right. I get it, hundred percent. So, how do you think he's doing down there? Um, I think he's doing fine because um, this is, you know, this is an interesting year. This is not his team. Okay. Like I will submit to you that of the twenty-two players who started the last game, I would say the over and under would be five and a half starters in the fall. Wow. You take the over, you take the under. I would take the under. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't think a lot of the guys playing right now will be playing in the fall. Wow. And so I think he's done a good job. I good think job. it's uh, but you know, anybody takes over a position like that, they haven't won in seven years. Yeah. That dude ain't no miracle worker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So it takes time to get your players in. It takes time to change but the culture. they think the people who see Dion come because of the way Dion's always won, they're going to think we good now. A lot of the people. A lot of fans. Yeah, but fans are fans. Fans are fans it. for a reason. I get it. Yeah, but but he's Deion Sanders, man. I I love. I know you've seen him run down the sideline and all that back uh-huh. in the day, boy. Y'all, hey, that that we had some hell of a years, man. I ain't gonna <laughs> lie to you. Listen, man, you you seen some things, man. And yeah. I, I wish I could have seen. I seen it on TV though. So what was the height? What was to you, in your opinion, what was the height of your career? The, the thing that you saw that was such an amazing event. Event, event, and just anything in in the journalism that you think that that touched you the most. An event that I went to. Event. So it's two questions: event, and then something that actually touched you. Whether someone said something, or an award that was given, or something uh, like that. Um, event. That's interesting. It's a good I don't know. Question. You know, I, I think um, if I think about it. I covered the 2010 Olympics, okay. and, the, and the reason that stands out to me is one, um, they thought enough of me to send me to the Olympics. Wow, mm. that's good. Um, two, now I know why they did it. They did it because I was the best deadline person that they had amongst colonists, and it wow. was in Vancouver. And so obviously with the time difference, you know, you want somebody who can write fast and good on deadline. So I, I figured that was part of the reason why they sent me. Um, but the reason that sticks out, it was a monumental part of my career because I got up there to the Olympics. It was the Winter Olympics. So you don't know nothing about that. You only know about the Summer Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> Except for that Jamaican bobsled team. That, that was it. Aside from that, that you don't know it. nothing about that's that. That's it. No, so I'm, I'm like, like is always I love in there this show, somewhere. man. Thank you, okay. Josh, for coming on the show, Jamaica man. Jamaica is so always glad in there somewhere. You. Boy, you so. coming back. I'm going to have to get him back over here. <laughs> so I'm like you. I don't know nothing about the Winter Olympics yeah. except hockey. I know hockey's good. And so I'm covering it the first three days, and I'm not – maybe first four days because I was there 21 days. It was a long wow. time. And so I'm not very pleased. My stories are fine, but I'm not very pleased with them. And then I went and covered this uh, skiing event with Bodie Miller, who was one of the best skiers in America. Okay. Although I think he was coming off an injury. And uh, whatever he did that day – I can't even remember how it finished. But I wrote that story, and I turned it in, and I said, oh, shit. Yeah, I said that. <laughs> I done figured this thing out. It ain't about the skiing or the figure skate. It's not really about the sport. Really? It's about the person. And I was like, yo, I just write about the people. I make the sport the backdrop. I'm going to write about the people. Yeah. And as soon as I figured that out, uh, I got a note a couple of days later from my boss. Oh, your last two pieces have been fantastic. Keep it up. And I was like, that ain't <laughs> nothing but a is. confirmation. Yeah, yeah. And so really from then on, once I once I got back from the Olympics, even now, I write about people. people. Whatever it is, it's about the people. It's about the heroes. It's about the villains. It's about the people. Because that's what people are interested in. That is so true. Because we want to know. 
I love where we, I love and hate where we are right now in society. Because I love the fact that a lot of people are becoming more transparent with their life, with their everyday. You feel like you know a lot of people by whether social media, what people write. People are not trying to just hide everything. But some people can be so overly intrusive and, and just say all sorts of things and it end up being bullying. And those are the parts of it I don't like. But I love the fact that I feel like I know you through whether writing or what people tweet out or what people say on Instagram, Facebook without actually knowing the person. Mm -hmm. Although not everything on social media, just like every, not everything in the news is true. Yeah. You have to pick out, you know. Right. How do you, how did you, how did you like that trans, social media when it came into play? Cause you've seen it when it, when it came into play for us, um, the tweets and all the stuff, the Facebooks. It's just, it's just it is what it is. Did, it, did you seem like it was more opportunity for journalism? far as to put stuff out there in a certain uh, way or did it take away from it because journalism is where people used to always look for whether it be writing up in the dallas news paper or writing up i mean watching the news on tv people weren't really looking everything on social media to see the news and to see certain things i think social media gave um provided more of an opportunity for journalists to brand themselves that's what i think yeah that's you good. know and whether you took advantage brand of it yourself. whether you didn't whether you got labeled an expert, whether you got labeled a knucklehead, <laughs> I think it just gave you more of an opportunity for people to uh, to brand yourself because people can reach you. Before, they couldn't really reach you. They reach yeah. you by an email, yeah. send you a letter, it's whatever. Now they can reach you instantly. I think, like, when I seen, the, like what you just said, emails, when I seen the post office, when I seen they wouldn't convert, when emails came out, you right. remember that? It, they lost money on that whole ordeal, not converting quick enough. I believe right. they could have they honed in on that whole market because they already had all the masses. And I felt like I was like, okay, so the next thing happened, you got to be on top of it or else you lose out because technology is moving so fast. You right, know? right. I, and that's that's kind of how I looked at it because I've seen a lot of people get laid off. I think it was Sylvania. And all, like, people getting laid off from that place, man. The post office. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, if they'd have converted that, they'd have saved all those people's mm -hmm. jobs. I right. always thought about that. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was, uh, I mean, I think when social media first really started jumping, it was a matter of, um, you know, embracing it or not embracing mm -hmm. it. And uh, whether it's technology or whether it's something like this, I've always been somebody who embraces change and whatever the latest yeah. is. Up until recently, like the last five years, I was that guy, you know, whenever a new phone out, I, I got it. Oh, yeah? Oh, dude, that was a... You know, until until I said, okay, now these phones are out so fast, they oh, ain't really they changing all yeah. that much. <laughs> but for a while... The technology was changing so fast that every year the, it was okay. It would be different. So I mean, I did that for like a decade because I always like the newest, best technology. Yeah, Some yeah. people don't like technology because they're scared of it. Me, no, I always you run gotta to have it. it. See, I, I started doing it. it. I like that, but then I I hated it too because I always say, okay, let me give it a while for them to iron out a bug because the when kinks. whenever it comes out, you always hear well. Sometimes it's a recall on it because this part is needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what? I'm I don't want to be that person that has it. And they have to recall it. I'm like, let, let that. See, I feel like that about that vaccine right now. <laughs> hey, man, I'm scared of that vaccine. I ain't even want to go there. I'm kind of kind of scared. Understand, but understand. my cousin, I had my uncle on the phone, and my they, uncle Calvin Calvin Brown, and I had my uncle Jane Rowland out of California. One of them took the shot, and one of them didn't. And they both was, I was listening. I had them on three-way because I don't oh, get yeah. to go see them like I used to. And, Uncle and Calvin, they're older. Yeah, they're older. One's like 80-something, well, and the other one's like 70-something. He didn't take he shot, said, too. He said, no. He, didn't, uh, well, the one in, he said, are you sure about that? I said, dang, so you didn't take it? Said, no, so I'm edging it on. I want to know <laughs> why he uh, didn't take the shot, you know. But both, he said, did you have any symptoms after? You know, like he was thinking about yeah. taking asking, it. Yeah, yeah he, he really, the one in California, Uncle Jane right. Rowland, he was like, I don't know about this. <laughs> <laughs> like, but... It, but you say the older you think the older guy needs to take it. Oh uh, yeah, if you're in the if you're in the wheelhouse, you need to take it. If, well, I, I'm gonna I'll say this on air because I just want people to know that I was in a meeting the other night on in a late night meeting, and um, yeah, my my friend's wife is a nurse, and she say five elderly people took the shot. Mm -hmm. And what else did he say? That they passed away. Five elderly people died. The same ones. Of course, old people gonna die anyway. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's just a touchy situation. You don't ever know what it's about. It's like they talk about DMX with the overdose, but some people say it's because he took the shot. Two days before. It, 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 don't give me that conspiracy well, stuff either. I ain't give you no <laughs> but, You know, somebody like that, who knows what was in his system? That's what I said. You don't know, because that's, that's just, we live in a crazy world, yeah. man. I'll tell you what. But let me ask go you. Ahead. But, you got um, any more questions? Yes. No, I don't do Be- drugs. <laughs> No, I'm not asking about that. I'm not uh, asking about that. I just want that. that on the record. <laughs> Let's go. I'm just saying. I ain't never been a drug record. guy. Yeah, we, he's not a drug but guy. But you do people who have. Yeah, he's black. Uh, <laughs> I, well, see, check this out. Now, see, I, I, I believe. Okay. I believe this. I, know I mean, some, but I know a lot of people in Oak Cliff. <laughs> no, I don't brand a city like that, okay? No, uh, but the hood. Let a man answer the question. Oh, God. Go ahead. Well, see, it, like, I know people who have smoked weed, who smoked weed. I don't consider weed a drug. Of course well, not. Well, see, but see? Well, I don't like none of it because I'm a control freak, and so uh-huh. I don't like anything that, that, uh, that prevents me. me from being a control freak. So I've never been a drug guy, and so I never hang around drug people. Not be intoxicated by a lady. Oh, okay, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's and it, I might be, I might. I might be OD'd on that. There you Aww. go. Chasing oh, that's a woman. Good. That's but, good. Aww. But uh, but no, I've never been. I mean, I think, I've, I think I've tried to blunt once in my life. Maybe twice. Yeah. And it that's it. And I, I didn't figure, see what the big deal was. And yeah. I was mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it made me to where I didn't want to do nothing. So I didn't mess with it. No. Nah. I like to be on point. I got stuff yeah. to do. You ain't for the. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't like nothing that dulls my senses. That's it. That's so it. So back to my question. Uh-oh, my here we original go. Original question. Yes. So being in the career that you are in, if a young kid wanted to do something like what you're doing, what advice would you give them? Plus also, would they have to have thick skin to be in the career that you're in? They can't be also sensitive. Um, okay, I'm going to take the second one first. Okay. Whatever you do, you can't be sensitive. Because, you you know, I tell people it doesn't really matter what field you're in or what you're doing. You get a, you figure out amongst the people you can touch who knows what they're doing. Okay, Elvis is in communications. So when you start off, you figure out who's really good at this job and you have some kind of rapport with them. You the people who can tell me if I'm doing things well or if I'm not. Mm. Anybody else is just noise because... People will tell you all sorts of things to have you believe and you can't do something it's because they want your job. Yeah. Or because yeah. they don't like you. <laughs> exactly. Or whatever. That has nothing to do with you. And you be feeling like, oh, I can't do this. And no, nah, it's really, they just had an agenda. So I've always been a person who kept a very tight circle about what I could do and what I couldn't do. And then literally, if you weren't in my circle, what you said really had no effect on me. And it didn't matter if you was my boss or not, because bosses are the same way. Mm-hmm. They don't like you. They think you privileged. Yeah. They think you shouldn't have it. So that the fact that you were about, the fact that you were my teacher, didn't didn't affect me at all. I if re- my circle didn't say, and and but but the thing is, you have to have people in your circle. Like I'm in people's circle now. Mm-hmm. And I remember I called my boy up one day. He wrote a story. He was covering. Some, High schools or something for the morning news. And I had been working. Because I tell people, they say, hey, I'd like for you to work with me, mention me. Okay, you want the truth? Because I don't, if you don't want the truth, I, I ain't really the dude for you. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah, okay. Because I say, it's JJT School of Journalism. I can't enroll you, but it, you know, it is what it is. So yeah. I call my boy up. What the fuck is this you wrote? <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> what are you talking about? I, say, well, I mean, really, dude, what are you doing? It sucks. Yeah. Period. This is what's wrong with it. You can write this at any game, any place, any time, any year. What are you doing? There's nothing That's, about this. That. Nothing about this is original to the game that yeah. you went to. Yeah. You ain't got no quotes. Basis. You ain't got the Y That's, in there. That's what you need. You better than this, dog. Yeah. Yeah. That helped him. Not then he went through it and looked. It. And what yeah, said? you right, man. Yeah. We done it. All right, we let's not it. have these half-ass efforts no more. Yeah, because right? my time is valuable. Yeah. Your time is valuable. Exactly. And I told another friend of mine. Actually, it's the same guy. This is like a year later. Yo, I'm going to the SMU beat. I need the SMU beat. You ain't ready for the SMU beat. Wow. Good. You know? No. Yes, I, I, no, you ain't. This is what you need to do. You got go do this, high schools. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Don't worry about the other stuff. Just focus on these things right here. Do that. You'll be ready for SMU in a year. Wow, that's good. He did that. He was ready. Came back. Yo. SMU beat over. I need it. All right, I got you. I tell them, put you on there. 
You but he went through the he had to go through it. At least, at least you ain't setting people steps. up for failure. Because right. So that's that's him. one. You don't let so everybody gotta have thick skin. And um, you know, the advice I give is is um is universal advice. Because it doesn't matter, it applies to whatever you want to do. And you know, the first thing you have to do really to be successful is figure out who you are. Yeah. Like and some people like me figure it out at eleven or twelve. No, it took me a little while. Some people about can be in, my sister was in her mid-30s yeah. before she figured out, who am I? What do I do? What do I stand for? What am I all about? What do I tolerate? What do I not tolerate? Mm -hmm. Which is one reason I ain't never been around drug people, because yeah. they know that ain't what I do. Exactly. So, I mean, I ain't mad at you if you do it, mm -hmm. but you do it over there, and then we come over, we do something else together. We play video games. Exactly. But uh, um, So, who are you? And once you figure that out, then it can be, um, where am I going? Because mm. you can't go nowhere till you figure out who you are. I mean, you can go someplace, but you ain't got, there's no destination in mind. It's just, it's okay, stuff. so who are you? Where are you going? That's your destination. That's when you pull out the GPS. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm going here. Okay, now how do I get there? Bus, car, walk, jog, run, swim, boat, yacht. How am I getting there? And those are all different phases that take people different periods of time. That's why mm -hmm. some people say you need to write a goal, write it down, so you and put it up so you can see it, so you can know. Okay, I've gone, I did this step, I did this step, and you still have your goal in your eyesight because sometimes when you don't write it down, you can get lost in the sauce. Now my wife is all about that. Yeah, me. I, I mean, I. It's he different don't write things. stuff down. I write. Yeah. No, I got. I'll forget. You know the older I got, I got, I, I'll I'm forget. Gonna, so I got to write it down. <laughs> Yeah. Well, see, yeah. I started. I, uh, I had a I had a uh, conversation with one of my boys a couple of weeks ago because he's big into visualizing and writing things down. Right. Yeah. And he's crushing it. And I said, you probably listen to Steve Harvey. So, <laughs> so <laughs> they do. So that. I said, I'm in a uh, I'm in a different phase of my life. So I'm gonna I'm gonna see what you're doing and see if it works for for me. Uh, now, whenever you do this, and I tell people this all the time, mm -hmm. um, you can't. You can't copy what somebody else is doing. You know, whatever your plan is, whatever your thing is, you can't copy. But you can show it to me. And then, like anything, I take it and I manipulate it and I put in what works for me and I switch some things around. And ultimately, I kind of bastardize it and make it my own. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to right. take other people's ideas. And some mm -hmm. people are like, oh, you're trying to copy. No. You take that. I don't even call it taking people ideas. That's your inspiration, mm -hmm. and you make it your own. Don't do because what worked for somebody else might not work for you. You right. have to make it into your own. And I so got a question. I took, I'm, uh, I'm taking over this in just a second. So I took a, I took it from my guy, and I just sent him a text today that said, um, "Yo, we talked about this two weeks ago, and the last two days was the first time." I got it the way I want it because I've been moving it, changing it, altering it, moving things around. And I finally got it like I want it. Mm -hmm. And it's already working, dog. <laughs> and uh, I gave him an example of what of how I made it work. And he's like, that's what it's for. And, um, you know, because I'm trying to create some different and some new habits, which is hard to do at my age. But not impossible. Oh, no, it ain't impossible. Well, it, it just requires more, <laughs> more, uh, Focus. Exactly. I want to ask you what's the key to a long, successful marriage. You know, I got to get in there. I got to get. No, in you there. don't. Yeah. And I, how I long you that. been married? Oh, he's been married like us. So how long? Yeah. <laughs> Seventeen years yeah. this time. So this time. Yeah, oh, he a bad boy. I was he ten know. on the first one. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the what's the key? Um, the key is to uh, to do what you, what it is that you do, um, and I say that because. We have a very, in, in a lot of ways, I would say we have a non-traditional marriage, which means I don't fix nothing. Don't ask me to fix nothing. Fixing stuff is not what I do. She fixes stuff. Wow. Why? Because she grew up in East Texas, and where you had to fix stuff in a lot of cases, and she likes to fix stuff. She likes to buy something and put it together. I don't like to put it together. And so don't say, well, that's the man's job. That's what, nah. No, nah. 
that's not what I do. So don't ask me to do it. I'm so. kind of the same way you and I'm from that's East not Texas. Like us. So, so uh, see yeah, what I'm, I'm saying? Yeah, I'm from, but I'm, he's I'm from East Texas. Texas. And he don't from put, Jamaica. He doesn't put anything together. No, but I pay I'm somebody to do it. I feel like my time is more valuable. But you know what I feel though? I feel like, okay, you'll pay for somebody to do it. How about right. this? I'll fix it. You pay me. That's what she be saying. I'm like, no. I'll, 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 I'll take the money. Because I, I, I get the choice to hire who I need to hire to get it done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I do most of the cooking. I do most of the grocery shopping. No, I, I don't do. Well, I do. Uh, you make me do the grocery shopping. Uh, we, we, we do it together. Yeah. Sometimes. I think uh, we had a lot of conversations. I think. Yeah, people always say key. communication, but communication. I mean, the reality is people fight over sex and money. So if you can figure those two things out, it really reduces the amount of time that you argue. And if, you know, I think the last thing, I don't really think it's complicated, but it's complicated for a lot of people, is neither one of us sweats the small stuff. Like, yeah. people do stuff to get on your nerves every day. Oh, Every day. But if you sit around and tell somebody, every time you do something to get on my nerves... I mean, what's the point? I mean, because I mean, I do stuff to get on my nerves every exactly. day. Exactly, that's she what does stuff me. to get on my nerves every day. But it doesn't do you any good to point it out. <laughs> like I you at just you. point out the big stuff, <laughs> like yo, okay, this right here. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, we got to work and, on this. Yeah, but outside of that, man, because anybody, if you toss away and find another one, it's just gonna be somebody else who do stuff to get I on. I know it. That's my big so, deal right there. I was like, oh yeah, if know. I try to go another. But if she ride, tossed me away, it'd be some other joker in here who would get on her nerves. Exactly. Something. So it's all about, uh, you know, for me and her, it's about that, and we got a we got a real good money concept, and so you know, if you could do that. You make it happen. One guy was on there. Everybody got to do what say? they do, man. He said that if you don't have money, you don't have love. Something like that. She I, was I upset with him. That. Well, you know, I think <laughs> no most people he know. Said, he said when like the money run out, the love is gone. Is what yeah, he, he said. said most women, when you get married um, or you choose a partner, you choose it for money. It's not really for love. In the aspect of, because I told him I said, I, like I've heard, um, like Tiny, her aunt would always tell her, when you marry, marry for money. But in her case, she she was happy that she got married for money, but then the love also came as well. Because a lot of people, although you say you married for love, if he don't have a job or if he's not doing this, you jump in shit because he's not doing, he's providing. Man should want to wanna do, do his thing, though. We hadn't had that problem, so I, I really can't relate to that. I know, know but that's what, what he was saying. I think, it's, um, I think men and women look for different things in marriage. You know, I, mean, I look for love because I grew up believing in that. You know, the white fairy tale love with the white, the white picket fans, the white picket fans, and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, all of that sort of stuff. Because you know, growing up as a little girl watching those, we had sat Sunday matinees that used to come on right. with the Dean Martin and all of those type of movies, the love, the romantic stuff. So that's what I was always growing up thinking life should be like. Then you watch Boys in the Hood when you came over here and it's going down. <laughs> <laughs> Jock Taylor, man, we appreciate you for coming on the show, man. We One more thing. Okay. What I you need your top three artists oh, of all music-wise. You want to hear your Dead music? I, I wasn't going to put that on you. But really? you, listen to me, you listen to music? She, okay. He, she Any wanna genre. Hear? Any genre. Uh, Dead or Alive. So it can be soul. It can be R&B. It can it be can gospel. Be it can be hip-hop. It can be, hip-hop. It can be any. You don't know what that man listened to. He my might be fair, I, mean, I don't think it's very original. My favorite three. Okay, go ahead. It's your favorite. It's your top three. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's it's funny. I have uh, <laughs> see, I would say I have my top three of all time, and then I probably have my top three that I'm listening to now. Top three all time. Of all time. But see, all asking. time would probably be one. Michael. Okay. That dang Michael Jackson just he topping He's the charts. That's one. everybody. But you know, Michael's my genre because that's who I grew up with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there's probably Prince. Prince, that's okay. a high, that's a high, that's why I say that's the two of them. Yeah, and then you know the third one is really interesting because I'm not really sure who that would be. Wow, uh, throw somebody in that slot. Could be it, somebody you listen to now. It's up to you. Uh, you know my problem is I'm Michael so eclectic Prince. these days. Those. Those are like McDonald's and Burger King, and whoever is third is so far behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And which it that, rightfully so, because Prince that, was a monster. He played. And I mean, they really won in one eight. Twenty seven. Uh, a lot of people who say Michael always throw like Tupac somewhere in there. Yeah, but no, I'm thinking I was really more of a Tupac than a Biggie guy. Although yeah, I like me Biggie, too. but yeah, I, me too. I, me too. I think Tupac majority. got me. Tupac got me through my divorce. 
Wow. Oh, I was blasting Tupac strong. something, something, <laughs> something hard. Matter of fact, Tupac's probably number three. Number three. So Michael Jackson, Prince, and Tupac. Tupac. Not a bad selection. I like it. From no, from, UGK. from 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 well. No what? UGK. I'm a UGK fan. Don't 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 do this. Okay. I, I listen <laughs> yeah, to Pimp yeah. C and UGK. Who? See, I don't really like rap. Yeah, see, we different. I like mm-hmm. when it comes to rap. I, that's why I listen. To, but if I went with music, I, I said twenty seven minutes of, of UGK till I came here to the you state. Jamaican. No, no. Or till I met him, I should say. Right. Well, I mean, I, I I came out of high school in the country, and that's what I listen to. Now, if y'all got a problem with it, you know what I'm saying. That's y'all. That's my top three you now. But definitely, Jock, we love you, man. Um, we definitely um, appreciate you. Appreciate on. you for coming on. Uh, we want to uh, bless you with an award. Yes. Because we, oh, we really? yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. We wanna we, because we give our guests roses while they're here, especially when they're your caliber. <laughs> we have a lot of a lot of guests, but right, right. You uh you definitely stick out. Well, I appreciate it very much. Man, so. I man, see you install a lot of my pictures off of Facebook. Yeah, that's I'm my wife. To, I'm gonna have to change my to. I'm gonna change my account to private. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to official Miss Jamaica. <laughs> so you wanna sit back down before we gonna do it over yeah, here? Then we'll work Lorraine for doing the. Okay, cool. Um. So, man, uh, do you want to present it to him now? We can end it and then... Are you sure? Oh, okay. He may want to hold it okay, or anything. Okay, okay, well, let me present you with this award. Yeah, oh, yeah. So Thanks hey, so man. much. I appreciate so, that. Right yeah, yeah, there. yeah, 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 man. Look appreciate at this. Look at this. <laughs> Jock Taylor, man. One of hey, the best journalists to come through for me. I can promise you that. I already knew that. Got my much. name spelled Jones. right and everything. Oh, that's her. That's, no, that's uh, what's up right there. <laughs> Say, man, Boss Talk 101. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Jock Taylor, we here at Boss Talk 101 would love to present you with this award to tell you thank you for your many, 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 many years of service. I in that the- <laughs> <laughs> I'm only many, many, many years. Old. Okay, 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 let's say that again. Many, many, many yeah. years of service in the sports journalism industry. And we'd love to thank you because you did really, really, really good work. All right, well, I appreciate that. Really, right? Yes. Thank you. Oh, yeah, man. Jock Taylor, we're giving them roses while they're here, man. <laughs>